Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Thursday mountain weather update and our big storm system has arrived in California. Here's the Sierra. This is up at Tahoe, Palisades Tahoe, your high camp uh, camera up there and it's snowing and it's blowing. Um, this snow is going to last through tomorrow morning and I'm thinking potentially uh, the resorts around Tahoe about 36 inches of grand total snow accumulation. Uh, more as you kind of work your way south through the Sierra down towards Mammoth where you could go 40 plus I think down in that area but radar tells the story there it is heavy precipitation slamming into California let me take you in closer uh, almost like a fire hose of just rich feed of moisture through San Fran Monterey San Jose Stockton Sacramento and then of course all that's being lifted up over the top of the Sierra we're squeezing out heavy snow over Tahoe and in fact even down in Reno it looks like there's a, a mix and maybe even snow and of course you've got deep blues all the way down the spine of the Sierra uh, towards Mammoth. Up in the northeast you've got a storm system sliding through with potentially light to moderate snow accumulations today high up at the ski areas. Some of the lower elevation areas could have a mix or even a little bit of ice but there are additional storm systems lined up in the forecast for the northeast. Really impressive here on water vapor the spin around this area i mean it is a it is well defined it's a big storm system so on this your oranges and reds are going to be your drier air in the low levels on this and then your moisture is going to be in the whites and the blues and let me change colors here look at this plume of water vapor of moisture in the atmosphere on the front end of this storm system just slamming into the west coast and guys, that's not it. There's another storm system behind it. So you'll get the big initial storm. And then there's a secondary wave that will likely come in and ride its way through the Intermountain West. So I think the best way to sort of describe this is, let me show you my bullet points. Lots of powder for President's Day weekend across the West. There's a big storm front loading the weekend. And then there's a second wave for the tail end of the weekend for some areas, not all areas. There's still a few bullseyes on my map with feet of accumulation. Overall, when I look at things this morning, I think the trend is for Colorado to go down in totals by about 20%. Utah stays about flat with big numbers. Wyoming goes up about 20%. That's a generalization. But the interesting thing is for Colorado, two or three days ago, you know, it looked like we were going to be, and there's still widespread one to two foot totals, but it looked like two or three days ago, there would be more two to three foot totals. And I just don't think that's the case now. The second wave, somewhere between 216 and 218. So the tail end of the weekend. Here my, uh, here's my snow timeline, best odds of snow. So if you were to say, well, what days are going to have the best new powder? Here you go. In Big Sky, the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Interior, BC, the Pacific Northwest, Tahoe, and the Northeast. So for example, in Big Sky, your snow starts up Late tonight continues into tomorrow, but only light accumulations with this initial wave. Moderate 215, and then your heaviest period for biggest powder is 216, 217. And the Wasatch, big storm comes in this afternoon, tonight, runs all the way into the morning of 215. Light on 216, moderate 218. Uh, in the Tetons, two waves, very distinct. This afternoon, tonight into the morning of the 15th, heavy, and then another heavy shot, afternoon, evening, 216 into 217. Colorado, it's late 213 through 215, heavy, second wave is moderate on 217, so you get the idea. And you can see the dates for all the other areas. In the northeast, there's our storm today, uh, and then a, a storm with heavy accumulation comes in 215 and also 216. All right, let me just look at Colorado briefly here. Here's a time height for snow mass. You can see the wall of green coming. This is a 72-hour forecast. You read it from right to left, and I'm looking at atmospheric moisture here. This is relative humidity. So what you want to see for snow production is the green, deep greens, all the way from the top of the peaks up. And you see that coming late tonight, 14, and into the 15th. Um, and, and remember, beyond this time period, there's an additional wave that's going to come through. So that's snow mass. There's definitely moisture there. There's definitely some lift. Looking at one of the snowiest spots in Colorado, Irwin, Colorado, which is near Crested Butte, 
on that west-southwest side of the West Elk Range, so on the other side of Snowmass. This model cranks out uh, almost three feet of accumulation at Irwin, and that would not surprise me for that area. So that's going to be one of the extremes, along with probably Wolf Creek for this storm system, um, pushing three feet. Those would be the two spots um, in Colorado, I think would be the bullseyes. Let's drill down on Alta, uh, Utah here. This is a forecast mediogram, and it's effective about 9,000 feet. So this model goes hog wild uh, between this afternoon, tonight, and tomorrow. It cranks out up there at Alta uh, about 50 inches of accumulation. I'm not forecasting that much. Uh, I'm down around 30 to 36 inches, somewhere in that zone, probably at 30. And then, of course, there's a second wave that would come through later in the period, potentially with some additional accumulation. But this is... This is going really big. Uh, looking at some of the winds here, 30 to 40 miles per hour um, through the course of this event. Temperatures start out very cold today in the singles, and then they start to warm. So we're going to do a lot of our snow production around 22, 23, 24 degrees up there at 9,000 feet. You can see that. So this is pretty representative of Solitude, Brighton, Snowbird, and Alta. Okay, let's cruise over to uh, Jenny Lake, or cruise up there, up into Wyoming. Forecast mediogram um, for Jenny Lake. And this is effective uh, about 86, 8,700 feet. Okay, so snow starts this afternoon tonight, continues through tomorrow, uh, off and on. And then, of course, down the road, there is a, a distinct second wave with heavy accumulation beyond this forecast, like 16, 17, somewhere in there. So this is only half the story for the Tetons. But uh, winds increase 30 to 40 this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow. Uh, very cold up there this morning, around 8 to 10 below. Uh, and then the temperature's warm. We're going to do a lot of our snow production between 16 and 22 degrees Fahrenheit. This cranks out about 22, 23, 24 inches of accumulation out of this first initial storm system. I agree with that. Um, and, and you'll see in my numbers, I actually account for the second wave, so the numbers end up being quite big for grand totals. Uh, but the big powder's coming in. Tomorrow's going to be a huge day. Tomorrow's going to be a huge day in a lot of areas. The Tetons, the Wasatch in particular, uh, and the Sierra. Um, so lots of powder coming. Okay, let me show you what the jet stream is going to look like. Um, we'll start this at about lunchtime today. So on these charts, these forecast charts, I'm looking for the brighter reds, the oranges, the tans. That's going to be your stronger winds up at jet stream level at about 30,000. So it guides a lot of this action around the country, around the globe, and helps with a lot of lift and direction for moisture. Um, and so let me move this in. And you can see the big dip in the jet across the West Coast. That's our big storm. Then it moves in. This is 11 a.m. on Friday, the 14th, Valentine's Day. Big storm moving into Utah, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Pacific Northwest, and eventually Colorado. And there it is. The deep dip in the jet, the, the trough right there sliding through Colorado. This is early on Saturday, the 15th. Then it moves out into the plains where it's going to produce potentially some severe weather on the warm side of this. And eventually it's going to become a large storm for the Midwest, Great Lakes, East Coast, and the Northeast. And then look at the flow across the West. This is early Monday, the 17th. Next storm system sliding into the Pacific Northwest. Moves into the Inner Mountain, Utah, Colorado. Slides on through. Here's early on Wednesday the 19th. Next storm system comes in from the, the Pacific Northwest, the west. Slides through the interior. And there's early on Friday the 21st. Okay, let me show you the snow accumulation over time. So on this chart, the, uh, the light blues are going to be light snow under 3 inches. Greens are 3 to 6. Yellows, 6 plus. Reds are 10 plus. So starting it at lunchtime today, two things to mention. you got your storm up in the northeast. You've got a storm in California along the west coast. Heavy accumulation. You can see those magentas, um, 30 to 40 inch numbers uh, up and down the, the Sierra. Up in the northeast, moderate to potentially heavy accumulations at the higher elevations of the northeast. Okay. 
Here's early Friday the 14th, snow moving into the Wasatch, Tetons, Idaho, southern Utah, western and southwest Colorado, Snow Bowl, Arizona, Taos, Angel Fire. Here's lunchtime Friday. There's late Friday. Um, and there's early Saturday. So leftover snow across the Inner Mountain. Next storm moving into the Great Lakes in the Midwest, taking some of the energy from the West. Leftover snow. Here's another little wave crossing Colorado. Snow for the Northeast. Next storm system in the Pacific Northwest dives down. Here's late Sunday the 16th. There's early on Monday the 17th. Snow continues out west with wave after wave. That's that, that second wave. And then this is uh, this is late Tuesday the 18th. Here is uh, Wednesday, late on Wednesday the 19th. Next storm system comes in from the Pacific Northwest. Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado. Through Thursday. Here's early Friday. Looks like the interior BC starting to get some good snow. All right, so that takes us pretty far out. Here's my official forecast. All of today through the 17th, we'll start in the Wasatch. I've got basically 20 to 30 inches of accumulation. Could be two to three feet. Um, you saw with that one model, it was uh, it was going crazy. Um, up in the, uh, the Tetons, basically two to three feet of accumulation. And there's two distinct waves with accumulation. In Colorado, the numbers, again, have probably come down at least 20%. But on the bright side, it's still wide widespread one to two foot totals for most places. About a foot up on the Continental Divide, Loveland A Basin, Winter Park, down into Summit County, up towards Vail. Two foot numbers for a lot of the West Elks, Aspen, Snowmass, the Highlands, Buttermilk. Moreover, of course, an Irwin pushing three feet on the west side of that range. Uh, Crested Buttes at about two feet. Down in the San Juans, one to two foot totals, uh, about three feet over Wolf Creek, and the numbers for Taos, Ski Santa Fe have gone down at least 20%, but still looking at maybe eight to 12 inches of accumulation. Um, okay, up in Montana, the numbers have trended up, probably eight to 15, eight to 16 inches up there. Big Sky, Bridger Bowl. Whitefish, Snowball, Discovery, and two to six inches up interior BC, Idaho. The numbers have gone up a touch. The Pacific Northwest, not a lot for Whistler Blackcomb. Washington State's at about a foot, but bigger numbers through Timberline and Bachelor. In the Sierra, uh, it's about three feet, maybe closing in on four feet there through Mammoth, uh, but about three feet for a lot of Tahoe. Snowball, two feet, Arizona and looking at a foot or more through Bryan Head, Utah. Okay, up in the northeast, the numbers have gone up a little bit here, looking at potentially 10 to 20 inches of accumulation for a lot of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine between today and the 17th. Uh, 10 to 20 for New York, up, up, upstate New York, and 8 to 10 through Massachusetts uh, in that general zone. Okay, back to the west here. Still a lot of bullseyes. Again, this President's Day weekend, there's a storm system on the front end and a storm system on the back end. Uh, for a number of areas and um, still looking very good. The biggest numbers, obviously, western, southwest Colorado, the Wasatch, Tetons, and the Sierra. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. I always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.